People are turning to digital media to manage their feelings. This may be something you've experienced anecdotally, but a study last year confirmed that young people especially perceive virtual emotional support as effective as talking with someone in person, meaning they are turning to digital devices and media to make themselves feel better. And they actually prefer it to in-person support even when other people are around. All of this despite evidence that it's less effective than real life support. The platforms they're using could vary from virtual reality to games to watches. Even car seats are now being programmed to respond to our emotional states. But smartphones are still the most prevalent, uh, at least in part because they're available to us almost anytime, anywhere, and they're loaded with videos, music, mindfulness apps, and most importantly for the purposes of our discussion, social media. This idea of using digital media to regulate emotions is known as digital emotion regulation, and it's a subject of my qualifying examination. Digital emotion regulation is an emerging field in academia, and it's an offshoot of a, a new field in itself, emotion regulation, which started gaining ground in the 80s and 90s. So why is it important? To my mind, digital emotion regulation represents an element of dig digital literacy, a skill for living in a modern, technologically advanced world. And as we adapt to living in a world where virtual and real lines are increasingly blurred, and that's there's no reason to think that'll slow down, uh, it's really important to understand the interaction between our psychological processes and digital media. And among some the areas where new knowledge could be impactful, better design of products and services, predicting usage based on emotional drivers, and most importantly, empowering people to live more healthfully. Let's address the digital component first. Media is no stranger to emotion regulation research. The literature shows a number of studies on traditional media, uh, especially TV and sometimes music as it related to uh, mood, uh, mood enhancement, usually as a remedy for boredom or negative thoughts. What makes digital media so different? Well, according to BJ Fogg, when a computer becomes involved in mediating communication, it can go from being a tool to a medium to an actual actor. And people do actually have relationships with their devices. Um, but here, Ruggiero helps us by pointing out three factors or three features that are of importance. Interactivity, which gives people more control in their, their role in uh, online discourse and also gives them a more personalized experience. Asynchroneity, as I mentioned before, that uh, quality of being any place, any time when a user prefers it. And demassification, uh, the expanding pool of media options to meet very specific needs of audiences. Now let's take a brief look at emotions. You can think of them as the building blocks in these neural processes that cause us to respond to both internal and external stimuli. In short, they're vital for interacting with and navigating through our environment, both physical and social. And because my interest is in promoting psychological growth and well-being, I've chosen to focus on pleasant or positive emotions like joy, happiness, interest, and contentment. It's worth noting here, just parenthetically, that in the literature, positive emotions are not given the same amount of scrutiny as negative emotions. This could be in part because they're less differentiated and makes them a little harder to study. Um, and in fact, a recent review of emotion theories and taxonomies shows that uh, negative emotions outnumber positive emotions four to one. Uh, but still, positive emotions have a distinct role to play in creating a growth mindset and promoting pro-social behaviors. A social context is especially relevant when it comes to regulating positive emotions because we do that often by sharing. Capitalizing is a particular kind of sharing. You can think of it as the counterpart to coping. It's telling good news and receiving positive feedback in return. Capitalizing and sharing in general have the effect of enhancing positive emotions, meaning it heightens the feeling associated with the original inciting event. It goes beyond. And the more broadly something is shared, the more positive the effects are. Given sharing as a regular 
regulatory strategy, we can now see the appeal of online social networking. And on social media, people have an extra incentive to disclose in a competition for attention. They're sharing ideas about emotional episodes. That disclosure and reciprocal disclosures builds trust and strengthens social bonds. And also through social comparison, people can reappraise their initial assessment to events and their reactions to it. So it turns out that social media is an excellent venue for upregulating positive moods and promoting connectedness. Finally, we often regulate our emotions for a reason. We behave strategically, and there's plenty of evidence to show that people act in contra-hedonic ways, choosing negative emotions uh, when they believe it suits them. For instance, um, drumming up anger in preparation for a confrontation or a negotiation, or dampening positive feelings if they feel it could be socially inappropriate for the situation. So if people are regulating emotions strategically, why? And what goals are being pursued? While I considered several theories related to media use, um, such as the mood management theory and uses and gratifications theory, I've chosen to ground my work in the self-determination theory by uh, DC and Ryan. Unlike other approaches, self-determination theory doesn't assume that we are filling a void or finding a substitute for something missing in the real world or correcting some other negative consequences. Rather, we are satisfying needs for autonomy, competence, and relatedness that allow for further growth towards self-actualization. It's this positive psychology orientation that will shape my further study of digital emotion regulation and how to promote well-being as well as a growth mindset. Digital emotion regulation as a field is in its early stages and it provides really fertile ground for research. Furthermore, I would argue that positive emotions are underrepresented in literature. Likewise, a recent review of published studies indicates that emotion regulation research takes into account a social context only 11% of the time, though we know that 98% of emotion regulation is happening in the presence of other people. Of course, digital emotion regulation as a field will continue to emerge and change shape as the underlying media and technologies change. And here are just a few ideas for further study. Um, who is using digital emotion regulation to regulate positive emotions and to what effect, meaning how successful are they? Under what conditions are they doing it? And on what platforms? Are there differences between media types or technologies? And how could those differences be explained by intrinsic needs satisfaction? At the end of the day, the question is, how do we take this knowledge and harness social media or other digital media to foster psychological growth through positive emotion regulation. Thank you, and my references are on the uh, final concluding slides.